When I tell my friends I've purchased an electric unicycle, most of them picture one of these, and then begin to picture me riding around as a circus performer. Round and round I go on stage, but that's not actually what I got. What I got is an electric unicycle. These are portable mobility devices that have come out in the last few years. The use of personal transport products and its integration with electricity is transforming the automotive industry. Similarly, electric unicycles are picking up steam across the globe. An electric unicycle consists of a single wheel, self-balancing unicycle is achieved with the help of a gyroscope and accelerometer. The electric unicycle is composed of electric motor, rechargeable battery, motherboard, and a driver and gyroscope. The electric unicycle is driven with the help of electric motor rather than a human interaction. The versatility to drive on any surface and its compact size is anticipated to grow the market. The potential is limitless. In 2015, Ford took out a patent on a vehicle that has a detachable wheel and hydraulic system to prop up the car so you can use it for personal mobility in the last mile. The possibilities are endless, and we're just starting to see what's going to happen. Here's my unboxing of the Kingsong S18 and first reaction. Let's get started. came packed neatly, multiple boxes on boxes. It's kind of difficult to get out, but once I got it unwrapped, you could see that it was securely packaged. A box inside of a box. My assistant helped with instruction, telling me what to do. Once we got it unpacked, it was nicely shrink-wrapped, foam inserts, comes with a charger, its own high-volume or high-pressure pump. I had one heck of a time figuring out how to pump up the hydraulics. The suspension was a little tricky. I'll make another video to explain how that was done. King Song S18 comes with an 18 inch wheel, 3 inches wide, a nice tire, mostly made for road use, those can be changed later, headlight, very bright, adjustable, automatic, turns on and off depending on your needs and conditions. I practiced in the house after watching numerous videos on how to learn how to ride these. The main thing they said was to get on and to get off and learn how to stand on it with one leg. Once I did that for the first week while I figured out how to pump up the shock, I kind of got it down. And then once I took it out, it seemed pretty quick that I picked it up. I went back and forth a few times with the help of the fence and surrounding things just to kind of get the balance and get the feel. And then as I went, it got a little better. And then I didn't need to touch the wall anymore. But I was only able to do it this quickly because I practiced in the house without any threats of just rocking back and forth and making sure that I had balance and understood how the wheel handled. Then once I got rolling, I was able to ride around. I practiced in a safe environment on the tennis court in my apartments. And I was off figure eights, round and round. The speed limiter, I set it for about 10 miles, and it would beep. It's very quiet, though, but it beeps to let you know once you've reached the speed and to warn you to avoid cutout if you're going at top speed. But after some practice, um, still working on it, I've gotten out and I'm able to cruise around without losing my balance and learning how to center my body over the main point of the wheel. 
basically it keeps you from falling forward or falling backwards. And it's like they say, uh, if you watch some of the videos, they say to carve like you're snowboarding or skiing and kind of go from point to point. And that definitely helps to help you gain control. After doing this for a few days, riding around in the tennis courts, I got a little adventurous and I started to venture out into the streets, which is a little difficult because it can be distracting with cars and stuff. So I chose to ride mostly at night in the area around my apartments where I live. And this helped me to get used to riding over bumps in different terrain, as when I started out it was in the tennis courts and that was a pretty flat surface. Practicing stopping at the net and starting, and then also practicing taking off on one leg. That is the most important part, so you don't have to have something to lean on. Once you start to get some confidence in that, being able to start with one leg, then you can kind of venture off and you don't really need any type of support system. Stability is definitely difficult when you first start because it's like learning how to walk or ride a bike from scratch if you've never done it before. Uh, I've ridden on a hoverboard and that was pretty easy compared to this because you have two wheels so you don't have any side to side weight shifting. But with this, you're on your own. You got one wheel and momentum is the only thing that will help keep you going unless you're able to do the rock back and forth, which I did practice inside my house. And that is something I've seen some video uh, some videos people are able to do that at stoplights or intersections and they just kind of rock back and forth and shift their weight on the wheel. It's a handy trick. So I would definitely recommend taking time and practicing on the basics before you take it out to try to ride it. This will help you avoid damage to your wheel or yourself and also give you a little bit of confidence before you get out there because it's really something that's not easily done unless you have experience riding it or riding something similar. After doing this for the first week while I waited, when I got my wheel in the mail, it had a valve, a faulty valve that was inside of the shock. So any air that I tried to put in, it just leaked right back out. I reached out to King Song. They responded pretty quickly. And I had already ordered replacement valves to hopefully fix this issue, which it did. And I was able to swap those out and get it aired up with the provided pump. Once I got that down, it seems to go faster and faster. You, you definitely accelerate quickly. And it's a lot faster than a bike or anything that has more weight or mass to it. I have an e-bike, the House of Lithium 5050, that I ride pretty regularly, and this thing takes off compared to it. It feels like. I guess maybe that's because there's nothing to hold on to, but it's definitely quick, and the beeps go off. As soon as you lean forward, you're going 10, 15 miles an hour. So I went round and round, getting my bearings, learning how to control it, and then started to venture off. One of the important things is being able to stop with one leg without any supports. So I went back and forth and I stopped at the net and practiced stopping and then starting without any supports. Once I was able to do that, then I took it to the streets. And this gave me experience riding through dips and riding over different surfaces and different terrain. Some of the bumps, some of the curbs, some of the washes will throw you for a loop. But with the suspension, it makes it really smooth. It's difficult at first to get to learn to ride this because you're using muscles that you've never used before, probably, unless you have, like I said, experience riding other devices like this. Uh, but for me, I had to pace myself and my feet would feel like they were going to start to cramp up and I would have to take a break. And I would just get off it and walk it off and then get back on it once my feet had relaxed. Uh, from what I've watched some of the videos online, they say your feet placement is very important and where you place the weight on your feet. This will also help to avoid your feet overworking and becoming tired too quickly. It's still something I'm working on, but I've noticed as I ride more and more, I'm able to go further and further. This is probably week two that I've had this, and 
I have a blast riding around. I have all the safety gear. I got the wrist guards. I got knee pads. I got elbow pads. I got a helmet. And I make sure I strap up with all that stuff before I go out because you don't want to take a fall and bang yourself or the wheel up. So it was really very valuable for me to practice this in the house. They say don't do it because it may take off and shoot across the room and damage something. But for me, I, I didn't have any issues because I had the previous experience of riding on a hoverboard. So that same mechanic of pushing forward and backward with your toe and heel is the same way that these operate. So if you're able to ride one of those, you can probably figure one of these out pretty quickly. It's just like half a one because there's only one wheel. On these trips around the block, I, I slowly expanded my territory to, to feel more comfortable with riding up hills and hitting bumps and that kind of thing because it it's definitely something you're not used to. The headlight is strong. It adjusts as you go in speed higher or it lowers when you go slower. Kingsong S18 has a max speed of 31 miles per hour. That's pretty quick. I have my house of lithium that does 30 miles an hour as well, and, and you're hauling. So safety gear is definitely essential if you're going to be pushing the limits of this wheel. For me, I cruise around probably about 10, 15 miles an hour, and that's just for fun. It gets me somewhere, you know, close range within a mile or two. I haven't gone that far yet, but that's really what I intend to use it for. It's not for racing around for long distances. Some of these different unicycles are faster. The Gotway is quicker, and they have the um, some other larger ones that will get you larger range and stuff. But for this, this is my starter wheel. So I picked an intermediate one that gets me good range for what I need it. I'm not going far. I'm going maybe within five miles. And it's not too steep a terrain. Everything's pretty flat out here that I will be riding on right now until I am skilled enough to get off into some trail riding and enjoying some of the trails and, and canyons out here in the Palm Springs area. But for now, this is great. I'm having a blast. Safety first. You can hear in, in the video the little beep that it does beep once you reach target speeds. You can set it at multiple intervals. And it's a warning speed for you to slow down. I have it set at 10, 15, and 20 miles an hour, which gives me a 10-mile window. Um, I'll probably up that pretty soon because I've gotten pretty – to I've gotten to 10 miles an hour pretty quick. So I'm going to set it to 15, 20, and 25, I think, and then that should be good. Getting comfortable with shifting your weight and predicting where you're going – Initially, I stared at the ground. It felt like same thing with snowboarding you don't, or anything. You don't want to look where the ground is. You want to look where you're going. So with this, I noticed as I've gotten better at riding, I'm able to kind of scan the, the area better and swivel and look around. It's a little choppy going through tight areas because the pedals are wide and you have to get used to how much space the wheel actually takes up. But it's really a lot of fun, and I would recommend getting them. This is a good wheel for me. They have smaller ones, but I feel like I would have outgrown that quicker. So I got myself this one, and I've had a blast riding around on it. I tried going out with the 360 camera, but I didn't have it in 360. So I got this shot, which is basically of the unicycle and my feet. And that's what I got right now because it's 107 degrees outside and I didn't feel like going back out there to get another shot. But I'll definitely get the 360 footage next time and as I start to ride more and am more comfortable not afraid I'm going to break my camera, I will definitely take it with me so I can capture some footage for you guys and also give you a more in-depth review after I've gotten more comfortable with riding this thing around. As for an electric unicycle, it was questionable. I wasn't sure if I was going to like it. Uh, I didn't want to get, some of them are very expensive, three to $5,000 for the bigger ones, so I went intermediate. This one I got on a pre-order. It's the third generation King Song S18, 
and compared to some of the other videos I watched with the newer ver or the older versions, this one's great. I think they fixed a lot of the issues that they had in the old ones with noise and rubbing and friction, and it's worked out great for me. So I would recommend this King Song S18 to anyone looking to get one. And if you need any information or have any questions, please put it in the comments below, and I will make sure that I answer it right away. And thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share this video. See you in the next one.